final speaker of the night. And as he gets up, I will get the band for one final rock out jam and they will blow your mind away, I will guarantee you. Uh, but for now, Mr. Uh, Arjen de Wolf, director of Radio Zamane. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'm very aware that the time for uh, drink and merriment has well arrived. So I'm going to keep it very short. First of all, I want to thank you all for coming. And I want to thank you all for showing your um, commitment to a cause that is very important and not much uh, enlightened in many of the Western media, many of the media all throughout the world. There are reasons for that. In the country of Iraq, where I was living and working before I took up the job here at Radio Zamane, and I was doing similar things, setting up media initiatives in a country that was war-torn, torn by torture, torn by dictatorship, and trying to move on. We were approached by a coalition of civil society organizations that told us we would like to have a page, a weekly page, in one of the newspapers that you are trying to set up, Al Sabah Al Jadid. And there, we want to post what we're doing. We want to post our meetings, we want to post our achievements, we want to post our decisions. And we said no. We don't want to post your meetings and decisions. We're not interested in you telling us what is happening. We're interested in you showing us what is happening. So instead, we asked one of those organizations to take us to one of the villages in the Kurdish north uh, and show what was a very pressing problem, one of the many in Iraq. But in this case, uh, it was about female circumcision. So I took two of our young students from the University of Baghdad, and we went to the north of Iraq. And we were able, after many, many uh, difficulties, to gain the confidence of a few people in the villages to show us what was happening. Circumcision is on the rise in Iraq, and this was the story. We didn't want to hear the story of the civil society organization that told us that it was a problem. We wanted to see what the problem was so that we can show it to the world and so that we can show what it is about that we as media in war-torn country in post-conflict situations want to try and achieve. The pictures are on the internet. Look it up, Aswat al-Iraq, and they are gruesome. They are gruesome. More than 700 women in the Iraqi north now get circumcised per year. And what that story did was that the Kurdish government was so embarrassed that they imposed legislation, that they imposed inspections, and that they wanted to show to the outside world that this problem that they recognized was something that they were tackling. Now this is, in many ways, the problem between media and civil society. Civil society needs media to bring the message out. But we need the story because nothing more, nothing is more impactive, nothing is more real and moving in the world than showing the picture. And I think that Dr. Ebadi referred to this when she said, you as media have a task, the story in Iran needs to be brought out. This is a challenge, because Iran is not a, an easy environment to get stories out that you want to show to the world. Still, that is one of the challenges that we're facing. We need to do better. We need to bring the stories out, the real stories, the real faces, the real problems, the real facts, not just the statements about how bad it is. Don't tell me how it is. Show me how it is. This is one of the major challenges that we're facing. The second challenge that we are facing as media that are working for Iran is that, as any media in any country, we tend to be elitist. We tend to be intellectual. We want the approval of those people that are the thinkers in the world. And what we end up doing is focusing on the big cities, on the universities, on the people that went to uh, universities and that had their education and that write beautiful long stories with words with many, many, many syllables. 
While the fact of the matter is that real change in a country often starts in big cities, but without the provinces, without the people, without the vast population that is outside of those big cities, you achieve nothing. And we as media, certainly for Iran, need to do better at that. This was a realization that didn't come to me because I'm a very smart man. This is a realization that came to me because we have a very smart chief editor, Mohammad Reza Nikfar. Uh, he's sitting here in front. And he made this very clear, and it is a truth. And we as media often are way too lazy. We're sitting behind our desks, we're writing up our opinions, and we're sending them into the world, and we believe that that is what our job is. That is not our job. Our job is not to sit behind a desk. Our job is not to read other articles and reproduce them. Our job is to get off of our chair and go into the world and tell people what is happening. Yes, this is difficult in Iran. And this is what brings me to my second and final point. The, distinguish, uh, the distinction between media and social media more and more becomes completely irrelevant. If we as media don't learn fast that we are not some elevated group that tells people what the world is like, we will perish. The only way that we will survive, especially in a country like Iran, is when we agree to become part of the conversation. Not the one that steers it, not the one that commands it, not the one that decides for other people what the truth is and what isn't. There is a conversation that is going on in which we have to take people seriously. In Mashhad, in Esfahan, in Shiraz, in the provinces, Arabs, Turkmens. If we don't do that, and if we keep on sitting in our high ivory tower, trying to tell people what the reality is, the reality will pass us by. And this is the lesson, I think, or at least my takeaway, of this evening. Media, certainly for Iran, especially because it is so difficult to get the real story out from Iran, can only be relevant and reliable and move people and move governance around the world and move the Iranian people if we take those people seriously. There's many initiatives that try and do that. We try that. We work hard at that. And I'm very proud of all the people that work at Zamana. I'm very proud of all the people that work in many Iranian media that try to make this a reality. But we need to constantly understand that this is our challenge and that we cannot, cannot allow and cannot afford to have even one day of rest. These were the themes, I think, in broad sense that were discussed here tonight. Um, Again, I want to thank you very much for being part of that. Um, I'm hoping that we will meet many times again. We're planning to do this type of debates more and more, um, in which hopefully there will also be a little bit more interaction, because I understand, of course, that a lot of people in the room would have you know, wanted to get up and um, join the conversation. This was a very packed, action-packed night. I'm sorry that we didn't give all the possibilities for that, and I'm sure that we'll try and do better next time. I want to close with another statement of my chief editor, uh, Dr. Nick Farr. There's no such thing as small media or big media. There's only good journalism and bad journalism. Thank you very much.